Courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV channel and YouTube channel, VK1 WIA National News, Wireless Weather and Radio Sport is next. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Well, here we go again, this time in our 27th year of non-stop news. It is the WIA National News. It's for week commencing January the 2nd, 2022. In today's news, we're joined by Roger, VK2ZRH, Justin, Seven Tangled Whiskers, Felix, VK4FUQ, Peter, VK4EA, Jason, VK2LAW, Jeff, VK4ZPP has been thinking, and from Sunny Bendigo, Bruce, VK3FFF. I'm Graham, VK4BB. Just ahead of Board Talk, Bruce Defaults advises that the WIA office in Bayswater, Victoria, will reopen in the new year. Wednesday, January 19. Make a note of it, Wednesday, January 19. Now, WIA Board Talk. G'day, this is Peter, VK4EA, Portable Calandra, on behalf of the WIA Board. Season's greeting to all, and I hope Santa brought you good DX. A short report this time round as the Board has taken a break over the Christmas New Year break. But a few things to report. Uh, check out Alan Shannon's VK4SN contest calendar posted by the normal socials. And in a similar vein, Scott VK4ZZ has produced a calendar for South East Queensland VHF and Up Lunatics, detailing every VHF field day contest and corresponding MADS, that is, microwave activity days, scheduled for 2022. We'd encourage more of this forward planning for all of us to get radioactive. Please share your plans via whichever media suits you. And as I said, a short one this time round. Have a good New Year's Eve and cheers from Peter of VK4EA. That contest calendar Peter mentioned, developed by WIA Contest Committee Chairman Alan Shannon, is focusing mainly on the popular VK and international contests. Talking of contests, what is shaping up as VK's greatest contest news is soon to hit our desks and our news agencies. As Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, will reveal... Happy New Year. I trust the festive season was kind to you. What a year we've just had. COVID on the march and morphing into Delta, then to Omicron. Lurching through lockdowns and lockouts. Restrictions imposed and then lifted, then slammed on again. My sympathies go to those affected by COVID and those with family and friends affected by the virus. So, here we are in 2022, living with COVID. Having learned to trust the science and the medical authorities, we can get on with our lives, tempered by our acquired knowledge of how to protect ourselves from that sneaky thing hanging around where you may not suspect. 2021 was a watershed year for Amateur Radio Magazine, after a disruptive year in 2020. Amateur Radio was published on time and on schedule once again through 2021. The Publications Committee plans to continue this way through 2022. The concept of themed issues has been well accepted and it appears from readership responses that we have produced some landmark issues. Number one last year featuring digital ATV set the trend. The Whisper WSPR theme in number two continued the trend. It featured a shushing cherub on the cover and, surprisingly, was a bestseller in the newsagents. The Antarctic Adventures of Australian Amateurs feature in number five, with that dramatic image of an aurora over Davis Station on the cover, really hit a nerve with the readership. Oh, we thought that was something special. Issue six, featuring antennas and propagation, also sparked some thoughtful responses from readers. In addition, Amateur Radio Magazine carried some landmark technical articles through 2021. The indefatigable Dale Hughes, VK1DSH, kicked off in Issue 1 with a DIY digital ATV station project. Andrew Anderson, VK3CV, followed up in Issue 2 with practical communications at 30 terahertz, pushing the boundaries of amateur communications. The tireless Lou De Stefano, VK3AQZ, began describing his digitally controlled HF antenna tuner in Issue 3. 
This was complemented by an article on experiments with LoRa, or Long Range, digital transmissions by Dale Hughes, VK1DSH, and Demetrius Sifarkas, VK2COW. In issue 4, that champion of DIY, Jim Tregellos, VK5JST, described how the gold standard for SWR bridges, the Stockton Bridge, aka Tandem Match, works. Usefully, this came before his digital dial, the SWR meter project featured in our antennas and propagation issue number 6. And so we continue. As you may have already heard, issue number 1 for 2022 features contesting as the theme. I'll just go and stack my 10 green bottles back on the shelf as I listen to the choir practicing in the background and see you further down the log. This has been Amateur Radio Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH for VK1WIA News. No, you haven't tuned the ether stirrer. This is the official VK Ham News from the one VK1WIA. Hello, I'm Jeff Emery, VK4ZPP. And I've been thinking. Welcome to the new year and may we all achieve those things that we aim for and have success during the incoming year. For the news service, I would like to see more reports of activities, both personal and club, because out there is a listening audience, both on radio and on the net. And we can serve our complete audience best by giving them the news in a truthful, forthright and up-to-date manner. I mentioned the late John F. Kennedy before, and again I will paraphrase his immortal words. Ask not what amateur radio can do for you, but ask what you can do for amateur radio. From submitting news to the broadcast and print services of the WIA, to standing for the board of the WIA, to running the media services of your club, to cooking sausages at the barbecue, there are things we can all do to support our fellow amateurs. I'm Jeff Emery, and that's what I think. How about you? This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, RAC, Southgate, Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, NZART, EHAM, Amateur Radio Newsline and the worldwide sources of the WIA. Commencing news from Region 1, IARU Region 1 have announced they've cancelled their planned interim meeting in April due to the pandemic. It was decided at the recent EC meeting that they cancelled the April interim meeting in Vienna. The pandemic situation looks increasingly difficult and travel plus a physical meeting in April will most likely not be safe. At the same meeting it was decided to plan for an interim meeting in Friedrichshafen the days just before the Ham Radio Friedrichshafen 2022 held on June 24-26. The final decision for a physical interim meeting will be taken in April. Fearing radioactive transmissions from 5G mobile network towers, people in the Netherlands may have placed themselves in greater danger by wearing what they believe to be protective devices. The very devices such as necklaces, bracelets and sleep masks have made claims to shield people from what some fear is radioactivity from 5G mobile network towers, according to Dutch officials, have themselves been emitting ionising radiation at hazardous levels. A report in the BBC says that the Dutch Authority for Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection have issued a warning about the products telling people there could be long-term hazardous effects. The agency has ordered a halt to the sale of these devices. The BBC report quoted the World Health Organization assertion that, like amateur radio signals, 5G mobile networks make use of non-ionizing radio waves that do not pose a danger, adding that they're similar to the 3G and 4G networks already in use. Some people fear damage to their DNA from such transmissions and in extreme cases this has led to attacks on transmitters and towers. 
In news from Region 2, ARRL opposed Forest Service administration fees for amateur facilities. The U.S. Forest Service is proposing to implement a statutorily required annual fee for new and existing communications use authorizations to cover the costs of administering its authorization program. ARRL plans to vigorously oppose the imposition of the proposed fees on amateur radio. ARRL encourages amateur radio licensees to file comments opposing the imposition of the proposed administrative fee on amateur radio users. Comments must be received in writing no later than February 22. For WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there, and Happy New Year. Now, contest-wise, 2022. January, the entire month each year, is the WIA Ross Hull VHF UHF Marathon Contest. WIA VHF UHF Field Day. Summer 2022. 0100 hours UTC, Sunday 15 January, through 0059 hours UTC, Sunday 16 January. But differs in BK6. John Moore Memorial Field Day. The JMM FD contest starts 0100 hours GMT on the 19th of March and concludes 0059 hours GMT on the 20th of March. Harrow Angel Memorial 80 metre sprint, Saturday 7th of May 2022. 10 hours UTC to 11.46 UTC. VK Shires Contest 11 June 2022. WIA VHF UHF Field Days Winter 2022. 0200 hours UTC Saturday 25 June through 0159 UTC Sunday 26 June. Debra's in VK6. IAA UHF World Championship Next Contest is July 9 and 10. WIA Trans Tasman Low Band Contest 16 July 2022. The Trans Tasman Contest held on the third weekend in July aims to encourage low band activity between VK and ZL. WIA RD or Remembrance Day Contest. Weekend closes to the 15th of August each year. 2022 it's Saturday, Sunday, August 13 and 14. WIA NZART Oceania Contest. Phone, first full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. CW, second full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. Log deadline for all logs, 31st October. WIA VHF UHF Field Days, Spring 2022 is in November. DX Window, VI. Three jam ends today. The Victoria only jamboree, Vic Jam, includes the amateur radio station with the special call sign of VI3 JAM ends today. AX4 WIT, almost there once a year day. January 26, which is Australia Day and a Wednesday this year, Townsville Club will activate from their annual camp out Blue Water Way. Blue Water for the uninitiated is about 30 kilometres from the Townsville CBD. Thailand. Brad VK two B Y will be active as H zero Z N R in northeastern Thailand until the twenty first of January. And as well as QSL and direct to VK two B Y, you can also QSL via logbook of the world. Danish special event. Danish radio amateurs will be celebrating the fiftieth anniversary of H M Margarith the second, the Queen of Denmark's accession to the throne, by activating the special event call sign. OZ50Q during the whole month of January 2022. Special award is available see qrz.com. QSL via OZ1ACB, EQSL or LOTW. All QSOs will be confirmed via LOTW and EQSL. Poland. The fire is almost out. Special event stations SN0ZOSP and SN100ZOSP which have been on air all year since February 5, 2022, and have been celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Association of the Voluntary Fire Brigades of the Republic of Poland. Mario, IZ3KVD, is in Zambia, using the call sign 
9J2MYT. He will be there in Lusaka until June of 2022. Listen to him on SSB on 40, 20, 17, 15 and 10 metres. Send QSLs via IZ3 KVD direct only. Reply QSL cards will be printed after his return to Italy. Indonesia 7B2C, 7B2E, 7B2T, 7B2H and 7B2O are QRV until the end of October 2022 to celebrate the Javanese Hindu Siju Temple that was built in 1475. Activities on 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres using SSB and FT8. QSL via operator's instructions. BBC Centenary Special Event GB100 BBC Members of the BBC's Radio Club, the London BBC Radio Group, have been granted the exceptional all-year special event call sign to help celebrate the BBC's centenary year in 2022. Ofcom will permit GB100 BBC to operate throughout the year, starting at midnight on New Year's Day from the headquarters station in Broadcasting House, London. In 2022, the UBA, or in full, the Royal Belgian Amateur Radio Union, will blow out 75 candles. On the occasion of this anniversary, the HF Committee will organise a special activity under the title UBA 75 on the year event, June, January and February. All participating UBA sections will be on the air during the months of January and February, with special prefix ON75 followed by the three-letter abbreviation of the department as a club station. The new year is going to be a good one for members of the Irish Radio Transmitter Society. Hammond will be using the special call sign EI90IRTS to mark the 9th anniversary of the founding of Ireland's National Society. Listen for the EI90IRTS call sign throughout 2022. QSL via EI6AL. Well, 2022, here we are. And as John Lennon might sing, let's hope it's a good one, without any fear. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix, VK4FUQ in England. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, vk 3 F. And all the best to you for the festive season. Worldwide Special Interest Group News. Digital. The WSJTX Development Group, Joe Taylor, K1JT, Steve Frankie, K9AN, and new member Nico Palermo, IV3NWV, has announced the release of WSJTX 2.5.3. This new release includes a feature of special interest to users participating in the ARRL January VHF contest, January 15th to 17th, 2022. This new feature is an enhanced macro facility for text messages that is aimed at making it easier to ask another station to move to another band. This feature is described briefly in the updated WSJTX User Guide. Installation packages for WSJTX 2.5.3 are available on the WSJTX website. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier Another SpaceX rocket has carried 52 Starlink Internet satellites into orbit from California. The two-stage Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from coastal Vandenberg Space Force Base and arced over the Pacific. The Falcon's first stage returned and landed on a SpaceX drone ship in the ocean. It was the 11th launch and recovery of the stage. Starlink is a satellite-based global internet system that SpaceX has been building for years to bring internet access to underserved areas of the world. This mission was the 34th launch for Starlink, a constellation of nearly 2,000 satellites in low-Earth orbit. 
In further news, re SpaceX, NASA is to purchase three commercial crew missions from SpaceX. NASA originally envisioned alternating missions between SpaceX and Boeing, assuming both companies' vehicles will be certified around the same time. NASA has announced its intent to purchase three more commercial crew missions from SpaceX as a hedge against further delays in the certification of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. Derek OK9SGC has recently uploaded a very comprehensive beginner's guide to receiving HRPT weather satellite images. The guide covers almost everything from purchasing and building the hardware to finding and tracking the satellites to setting up the software and decoding images. HRPT reception can be a little daunting as it requires a good L-band dish setup which involves choosing and building a feed and importantly a way to track the satellite with the dish as it moves across the sky. Find the story and a link to the guide in the WIA News text version. Worldwide special interest groups, Rescue Radio. And a reminder here in IARU Region 3, our Emergency Centre of Activity, or what is called COA frequencies, are 3 6, 7.11, 14.3, 18.16 and 21.36 MHz. Up now to Region 1, where radio amateurs are planning Wi-Fi for disaster areas. The German radio amateurs who have joined forces in the non-profit German Amateur Radio Club, DARK, have developed a new emergency radio concept. During the flood disaster in the R Valley, they hardly got a chance because the rescue workers have a powerful communication infrastructure with the new digital radio for authorities and the radio bridges that amateurs could build could hardly be integrated. In the future, German radio amateurs in disaster areas will no longer just record and forward messages as before, but rather set up high-performance Wi-Fi networks that allow those affected to access the internet and send messages and retrieve information themselves via smartphone or notebook. Special Interest Groups Raw Rotarians of Amateur Radio. Rotary and Ham Radio, a winning combination that goes back years. 1921 saw many demonstrations of broadcasting. Perhaps the best documented of these took place on November the 15th, 1921 in Pine Bluff, where the president of the Arkansas Power and Light Company, Harvey Couch, had arranged for a broadcast of live and recorded music from Couch's home to a meeting of the city's Rotary Club. Couch, the Rotarians and others were so impressed with this latest miracle of science that shortly after the pre-Thanksgiving demo, Couch applied for a licence for Arkansas's first broadcast station. Shortly Another look at old-time radio when our news editor, Graham, VK4BB, rewinds. Special interest groups, VHF and above, 9 on 9 centimetres, within sight. Justin, VK7TW, has more. VK7 is inching closer to 9 on 9, that is 9 operators active on 9 centimetres or 3.4 gigs. This is now a regular net following the very popular 23cm QSO party net where we indeed have achieved 23 operators participating with an average of around 15 each Sunday. Last Sunday saw the following operators on the air, VK7s, TW, ZBX, KAJ and OO all running the SG Labs transverters with around 3 watts out in either 
the 900mm by 600mm grids or the old GARC panel antennas. Mount Wellington proved to be a most helpful in reflecting signals fired at it and as such all operators were able to copy each other easily on FM with 5x9 plus signal levels. Some varying amounts of QSB were noticed with some signals from minimal to quite significant levels. We are planning to perform experiments with SSB and some digital modes as well as and all capable of being GPS locked and this will be interesting. This is a fantastic result so far and we're hoping to build activity further. There was some work carried out on one station this week and some activity at the Reese Club at night involving making cables, in enclosures and tweaking of RF levels and things. So all things being, we are hoping to have at least two other systems on the net this Sunday. If you're keen to find out more about the equipment required to become active on this band, please contact Justin, VK7TW, and we're sure he'll point you in the right direction. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota, Youngsters on the Air. 11-year-old Jacob Hoschar becomes KY7HAM. Forks Forum reports this means he passed his general licence test. He now holds an amateur radio operator general licence. Jacob's dad, Andrew, said, I'm beyond proud to let everyone know that his call sign will be temporarily KY7HAM forward slash AG until the FCC updates its database. He added, This is huge. He studied for over a year, worked his butt off and stuck to it. If anyone is curious about how much is involved in earning a general licence, Google search Amateur Radio Operator General Licence Practice Exam and try one out. It's a lot of information for anyone to take in, let alone an 11-year-old kid. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in sunny and hot Bendigo. Rewind. This is KD KA of the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company in East Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We shall now broadcast the election returns. <clears throat> we are receiving these returns by special arrangements with the Pittsburgh Post and Sun. We'd appreciate it if anyone hearing this broadcast would communicate with us, as we are very anxious to know how far the broadcast is reaching and how it is being received. The evening of Tuesday, November 2, 1920, had come and gone. KDKA, ADMK and perhaps others had taken to the airwaves that evening to report returns in the election that put Warren G. Harding in the USA's White House. A few hundred, perhaps a few thousand people there were no rating services back then, managed to gain proximity to a primitive radio receiver of some sort and listened as the results were tallied and read into equally primitive microphones. In retrospect, one can't help but wonder what went through the minds of those individuals who stayed up late to present election reports via radio phone. A radio broadcast is at best an intangible, something highly ephemeral, perhaps even a bit ethereal. Had their voices really gone into space to reach invisible ears? Had anything happened at all? There had to have been at least a slight sense of unreality in those first moments, a feeling perhaps best captured by Garrison Keeler in his description of the inaugural broadcast of mythical station WLT, St Paul, Minnesota. But then wait, KDKA's seminal broadcast back in 1920 is now viewed as a great day, a truly historical one, something that changed the landscape forever. However, as with any important event enough to make its way into the history books, there's always the dawning of the next day, the interval after the initial exuberance had passed and cold reality begins to set in. It is then that those who have been cheering in celebration are forced to stop and ponder what happens next. Radio. The cat's whisker with us forever. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au. On the 2022 social scene, VK7 Reese's Open Day, Sunday, January 30, 11 a.m. 
in VK3 Spark Rosebud Radio Fest, February 13 at 9.30am. VK4, it's Red Fest, Saturday, April 9. And in VK5, the Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the CERG Convention happens at Mount Gambier, the Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. Now, till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Happy New Year, mask up and walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5 BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.